Today we are going to discuss NMR spectroscopy. This is the first lecture of NMR. In this lecture, I am going to discuss principles of NMR spectroscopy and what is shielding and day shielding. In the second lecture of NMR, I am going to discuss how to calculate the number of signals in NMR, what is TMS and what does it mean by chemical shift. And in the third lecture of NMR, I will discuss splitting of signals and spin-spin coupling. So let's start with the introduction of NMR spectroscopy. Its full form is Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. This spectroscopy is used to identify carbon-hydrogen framework of an organic molecule. It uses electromagnetic radiation of radio frequency ranges from 200 to 600 megahertz and it causes nuclear transitions. As you know, electrons have two spin states, plus half and minus half, and they are denoted by spin quantum number ms. Similarly, some nuclei also have allowed spin states, plus half and minus half. For example, H1, C13, N15, F19, and P31. The only difference between the spin states of nuclei and the electron is that in case of electron, lower spin state is minus half, while in case of nuclei, lower spin state is plus half. In absence of applied magnetic field, nuclei are randomly oriented. But as the magnetic field is applied, they either get aligned with the applied magnetic field or get aligned against the magnetic field. When they get aligned with the magnetic field, they will have lower energy state. And this energy state is known as alpha spin state. But when they get aligned against the magnetic field, they will have higher energy. And this higher energy state is called as beta spin state. The energy difference between alpha and beta spin state is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field strength that is denoted by B0. So when you increase the applied magnetic field strength, the energy difference between alpha and beta spin state increases. This energy difference between alpha and beta spin state is similar to the energy of radio waves. That's why in NMR spectroscopy, electromagnetic radiations of radio frequency is used. When a sample is subjected to a pulse of radio frequency radiation, nuclei present in alpha spin state promoted to beta spin state. And this transition between alpha and beta spin state is called as flipping the spin or the flipping of nuclei between alpha and beta spin state. When the nuclei undergo relaxation or when it return to its original state, it emits the electromagnetic signals. Those frequency depends on the energy difference between alpha and beta spin state. The frequency of radiation caused to flip a proton depends on the strength of magnetic field B0. Here we have the formula delta E is equal to H nu. This is also equal to H multiplied by gamma upon 2 pi multiplied by B0, where H is the Planck's constant. Nu is the operating frequency or the frequency of radiation caused to flip a proton. So from the given formula, you can get the relation between operating frequency and B0. Operating frequency is directly proportional to applied magnetic field that is B0. The operating frequency of a particular spectrometer depends on the strength of built-in magnet. Greater the operating frequency of a spectrometer, so stronger the magnet and better the resolution of NMR spectrum. When we use a stronger magnetic field, it causes large energy difference between alpha and beta spin state. That's why you will get distinct signal for each proton. And you will get better resolution of NMR spectrum. What is the meaning of Fourier transform NMR or FT NMR? In modern instruments called Pulse Fourier Transform Spectrometer, the magnetic field is kept constant and a radio frequency pulse of short duration excites all the protons simultaneously because the short radio frequency pulse cover a range of frequencies. The individual proton absorbs the frequency required to come into resonance or to flip their spin. As the proton relax, they produce a complex signal at a frequency corresponding to the energy difference between their alpha and beta spin state. The intensity of signals decay as the nuclei loses the energy they gained from the RF pulse. A computer collects the intensity versus time data and then converts it into intensity versus frequency information in a mathematical operation known as 
Fourier transform and producing a spectrum called a Fourier transform NMR or FT NMR spectrum. In this spectrum, intensity is plotted on the y axis and frequency is plotted on the x axis. Let's try to understand why do different protons give different signals. A nucleus is embedded in the cloud of electrons. In a magnetic field, electrons circulate about the nuclei and induce a local magnetic field that opposes the applied magnetic field. That's why nuclei experience lesser magnetic field than the applied magnetic field. So here you will get the formula B effective. The magnetic field experienced by the nuclei is equal to B applied minus B local. It is the magnetic field produced by the movement of electron. So the effective magnetic field experienced by each nuclei depends on the surrounding electronic environment. So there will be two possibility for each proton. Either a proton is located in an electron rich environment. In that case, greater B local will be produced. And hence the proton will experience lesser B effective. Such protons are said to be shielded from the applied magnetic field because they are experiencing lesser B effective. As we have discussed earlier, energy difference between alpha and beta spin state is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field. And if the proton experiences lesser B effective, there will be lesser energy difference between its alpha and beta spin state. Such protons will require lesser frequency to flip their spin due to their smaller energy difference between alpha and beta spin state. Now come to the another condition. If a proton is located in an electron deficient environment, in that condition, a small b local will be produced and hence the proton will experience more b effective. Such kind of protons are said to be deshielded from the applied magnetic field as they are experiencing more b effective. As we have discussed earlier, Energy difference between alpha and beta spin state is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field strength. As they are experiencing more B effective, there will be larger energy difference between its alpha and beta spin state. So they will require higher frequency to flip their spin due to larger energy difference between its alpha and beta spin state. In the next video of NMR, we are going to discuss how to calculate the number of signals given by any organic molecule.